very much to the creator of the Crimson Ball, James Gunn! So I'd like to bring up some of uh, the people who helped me with this movie. First of all, uh, Rain Wilson. But then I started writing it, and it just got longer and longer and longer. And uh, it, it came, became what this is. And the script has almost not changed at all since I first wrote it in 2003. So um, that's, that's where it started. And for me, the really uh, amazing, I did not plan out any of the movie at all. And it just, uh, it just sort of came to me, especially the ending was um, almost like uh, my own sort of spiritual awakening. So it's, uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a fun script to wrote really quickly, and uh, it just stuck with me. And over the years, everybody kept telling me that the movie was too weird, it was too esoteric, I couldn't get the movie made. I did actually have a lot of actors that wanted to, to be in the movie, but uh, we didn't have many people interested in financing it. And, um, and, but it just stuck with me, and I couldn't let it go. And my ex-wife, uh, Jenna Fisher, called me up one day. And she's like, what are you doing with Super? That's my favorite script that you've ever written. I don't know why you're not making this movie. And I said, I don't know. And she's like, you know, have you ever thought of Rain for that role? And I, I know Rain for five or six years. And he was perfect because everybody else that wanted to play the role was, I, I didn't know anybody else who had the comedic shot and could also do you know, sort of the dramatic part of the role well and who, you know, you could believe was picked on the low man on the totem pole to die but was also powerful and big enough to kick some ass. But really, you know, the minute you said it, I'm like, wow, that makes sense. And I gave the script to Rain that afternoon, I think. Check this move out. <laughs> um, yeah, that, the tail end, the converse end of that story was, I was on the office set, and Jenna was behind reception, and was, she's like, what's going on? And I was sitting there eating the little candies, and, and she's like, you know, I just talked to James, and he said, oh, what, else, what should I work on? And I said, what about that script, Super? And then I recommended you for it, and uh, I think he's gonna send it to you, and I literally went over to my Dwight desk, and there was James sending the script and said, I hope, I hope you like it. And so I had him print it out. I had some chunky PA print it out for me. I was like, here, you fucking idiot. I want a gold leaf brought to my trailer. And uh, so I went, uh, I went to my trailer and I started reading the script that same day. And I was on page 21. And I, this is a true story, I texted James and I said, I'm in, I wanna make this movie, my hands are trembling. And that's, a, that's a true story. I, I responded immediately to this script on a really emotional level. And uh, I just, 
you know, the, the, the thing that I love about it is how many different kinds of storytelling are contained in this movie. I mean, you have a really heartfelt story. Uh, there's a love story in here. It's really highly stylized. It's really fucking violent. And, um, and it's really funny at the same time as it's heartbreaking. And how rare it is to have a movie that can do all of those things at the same time that is made for the amount of money that we made this for. <laughs> Funny when you talk about Jenna because Jenna was way more proactive than that. Jenna called me up and she's like, "Hey, what about that script suit?" Like she was tipping you out and then phone call. But then to you, she's pretending like, "Hey, I just talked to James on the phone." But really, it is awesome. because of Jenna Fisher that this movie was made. And then the other thing is when you wrote me that you're on page 22 and that you were in, I didn't take it seriously at all because I'm like, "Well, he didn't get to this part where the head's girl, you know, the girl's head gets blown off." And, I'm like, he may freak out, Rain's a spiritual guy, he may freak out on the violence at the end. Because I know the, the, the movie changes so much throughout, I really didn't believe that you were in until you told me after you had read the whole script. <laughs> Joke's on you. <laughs> How about Ellen Page? Instead, it gets gushy on the back. That was <laughs> <laughs> get both of them. I mean, Ellen read the script, she liked it, we had lunch, I liked her, she liked me, and we're like, this is going to be great. And then, same thing with, with Liv, I mean, we had a great time in New York, that was when, that was when I really felt like the movie was going to get made, that was literally one of the best days of my life was when you said yes. But when we were putting this together, this, the, the funny thing was, we were literally like writing down names of actresses for the roles and actors for the role, and we, in all, in God's truth, we sat there and we were like, you know, for the part of Bolte, we need an Ellen Page type. <laughs> and for the part of Sarah, would be great, she's got to be angelic, but you believe her as a drug addict with kind of a dark past. <laughs> we need a, a live Tyler type. <laughs> I swear to God. And so we were really like, well, we should at least just start with them, you know, <laughs> just see what happens. What's the worst that could happen? Yeah. And, uh, I remember giving the script to Ellen and then, you know, talking about all, it was like we just really gave it to her thinking it was completely a throwaway. It was not going to happen at all. And, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and a producer, Ted Hogan, this is actually his uh, second time in Midnight Madness. It's actually one of the first, the first year I did Midnight Madness, we had a twisted little film called Love God. And Ted was the producer of Love God, and now we've got him back. What, uh, how did you get involved with the other uh, project? Well, Rain, uh, <laughs> ma master of uh, Twitter, 
actually tweeted uh, one day that he, James underscore Gunn, were going to go out with a effed up low rent watchman. And uh, I actually wanted to make an effed up low rent watchman. And uh, I called Maine's agent, Lisa Hallman, and uh, said that I have to read the script. And uh, it took him about six months to uh, let me climb aboard the team. It did. It, it, Ted was really, Ray and I were like, we don't want a producer, we just want to get the movie made, we want financing, if you have money, then we'll talk to you, but we don't want a producer. But Ted literally would not give up. And he got our email somehow, and he just kept going and going and going. And finally, we were like, wow, somebody who feels as passionate about the script as we do. So let's and make the, it a, a threesome. The, the, remarkable, the remarkable thing was, was we came here last year. You know, I think we were still wondering, like, is Liv going to do the movie? I wasn't sure it was going to happen. And uh, we'd sent it out to a bunch of different buyers. We thought we had nine or ten folks who were going to help us with it. I happened to get to sit down with Miranda. I, it was in front of a convenience store some, somewhere, saying like, you know, I have this great project. I don't know what to do. Blah 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 blah. Miranda said she, you know, could help out a little bit, maybe, you know, on it. And uh, yeah, no, and then he gave me the script, and I was like, oh God, I don't want a script I have to read this weekend. And I read 12 pages, and I called him, and I was like, yeah, I like it so far. I think, I think. It's as good as it is right now. We're good. And to me, it was kind of a no-brainer. It was a great cast. It was a 